Hi, welcome back. This is Jim with uh, No Strings Attached Homeless Ministry. Get over. I want to introduce you to another one of my ladies on the on the road uh, that's out in the field. Uh, her name is Carol. Uh, I've known her for what? Two years. About two years. We've been through quite a bunch of battles over the last two years. Yeah, and ups and downs. Went from here to pretty good size now. I mean, <laughs> Actually, the camera's sitting on her uh, little car that uh, that was, uh, was graciously given. donated by the church. Yeah. Yes. And got her back on wheels, and hopefully we can. Uh, so I just goes to show you the things that 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 I do is how can you put a name to that? How can someone say, Jim, what do you do, and have a list? You can't. And and. You know the church donated the car to me, and it, the day that my car broke down, another member that comes here um, works in the auto shop. Yeah. He was so sweet. <coughs> the day that the axle snapped as they were backing it off of the ramp, putting tires on it, he just come up to me and sat down next to me and he says, Carol. I can't let you drive out off the lot with a car. And I was heartbroken. I didn't know what I was going to do. Because the car was my home. See, people and, uh, don't realize what it's like to live in a car. You know? Yeah. But then, see, you're almost like the, you're almost like the, the hidden ones that I, that I talked about. You know, you can always find the ones that walk down the street. You know, the, you know yeah. that will, that they, most people would call a bum or someone that they can instantly recognize. But you're the hidden homeless, where people don't realize that there's people like you out there. And, you know, people that live in their cars or in their vans. I mean, there's so many of them around here. How many do we know of? I probably know of 10 oh, myself. I know more. Um, you know more. I mean, that, that I contact every day and see every day. Um, how did I all. ever meet you, you know? It was just from, you know, from diligence of searching and seeking Word and about. seeing you. Word of mouth is what it was. Yeah. You know, just I I just noticed people are in yeah, desperation and, and I go and talk. You know. And you give what the preacher say that what the preacher call that? Walk across the room or yeah, something. Yeah, just walk yeah. across the room. But, uh, any little thing is even with me being homeless. There's still things that I help out with a lot of people out there. I help serve food and put up clothing for the New Hope Church. Uh, we help out the coalition every third Saturday, feed the people lunch. I help out here. I'm a member at the Edgewater Church. I help out with Go. I'm with the Kairos Prison Ministry. And He's very active in all of these. I mean, this very active. It's almost like God a full-time job. God has shown me so much love because I didn't know how to show love at all until then. I think that's the most important lesson that most people can learn is how to show love. Um, a lot of people don't even understand what true agape love is. And if you don't even understand it, how are you going to accept it or how are you going to give it out? Yeah. It's just something that kept experience over and over until it sinks in, and then yeah. you're like, ha, huh, there it was. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. so tell me, if you can, like I said, you don't have to reveal anything that you don't want to or feel comfortable with, you know. Um, okay. What happened to you? What what, what got took me? you into the into the streets? Well, tell, tell us the the dark and the sad side, you know. I know, and it's okay to cry if you have to, you know. But I, I want people to see where you were nor a normal person, what brought you to the streets, and then the walk back up. You, you see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I want um, other people to realize, you know, it could be them someday. It could be them. Okay, this is how it started. I was working at Nielsen Media Research. My back was hurting and hurting and hurting. Didn't know what was going on. I doubled over at my desk. 
I got seen by the doctor. I wound up having to have emergency gallbladder surgery. And then from that surgery, I didn't heal up. I couldn't stand up straight. I couldn't walk. And then from there, things went downhill. I lost my job. I lost my home. And I wound up in the car. And I had worked with vocational rehab for six months before I was able to finally get some back surgery, get some relief. And then after that, I now, I wound up at the Homeless you know, Coalition. How come they haven't never given you uh, your, um, your disability on all your injuries that you have? I know, you, I know we've you know, been working a little bit on There's that. There's so much. Every doctor that I saw when I started really going over my file, every doctor that they sent me to was their state doctor. It's almost a scam and there's right now, that issue. And I've noticed it being so hard. You know, for in there. Yeah. Untruth in those files. And besides the lawyer me having after a year and a half was not even prepared after a year and a half. I was just so upset, so now I'm appealing the appeal and I'm still in my car, but God loves me more. Sure and your ministry has helped me, given me food. You told me where to go to, to help get some other kinds of help that I don't know about. Just, uh, blankets and coats and yeah. cookers. And yeah, the hot plate. <laughs> the hot well, whatever, plate. whatever you needed, the you know, it's there. The yeah. Head. Head lice. <laughs> oh, and it's been a while, huh? They tell them about that isn't a little bit. That would that's gonna be funny. I'll let you tell that story. Uh, nah, this, People this, don't realize the kind of stuff that I do sometimes, you know. And this young girl and people when you say head lice, people just run. Scatter. <laughs> they do. Well, man, you grow up in Florida. You grow up with kids. You deal with head lice. You know what tickles me is they they run scratching. That's the funny thing is they start scratching. It's like, this poor girl who had head lice, and no one was helping her out or anything. And so you got with me, and you asked me if I'd be willing to help her. Well, sure. What's head lice? You know? Yeah, really. It comes and goes just like dirt. <laughs> So they ended up giving the girl a mohawk. And then I've had my ups and downs in the church too. And got things straightened out and smoothed out. And my faith is growing. It has. That I, I've noticed I a just, lot. I'm very proud of that. To see how you just Yeah, sort I, of I'm blossom. to the point now where I can't How many Bible studies wait. a week do you go to now? <laughs> Every <laughs> single one of them I think that's no. available in the county, huh? <laughs> hey, there's a a really nice church in Punta I know, you we own every one of them. I've right? seen you, you know, I've, I've watched you do it. And it was like, you know what, when I was first saved though, I wanted to live at the church too. You know, and because that's where I felt the closest. Yeah. And it's okay to do that, it really is. A lot of people think that they can only come on Sunday or they can only do something on a Sunday. They have to start to realize that it, it's, it's about the daily walk. You know, it, it's about yeah. growing and being involved in anything. And if you have God in your heart and you have God's love in your heart, you're going to be willing to do anything. You're going to be willing to do that. You know, you're going to be willing to do all the stuff people say that are works. There's nothing about works. It has nothing to do with works. It, it's giving a agape love back. You know. And it's pouring that back into the community, into other people. Everyone you touch and meet, you, all you want to do is tell the good, the good news, you know. <laughs> Talk about the story. How, yeah, how much during the day do you do you spend with God on your mind? Out 24 hours? Yeah. About 22. Okay, well, that's about like me. See, that, that's what it's all about. People think, people really don't even think about God until... Yeah. Oh, 10 minutes to go to church. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Then they put on their yeah. God outfit, dress up, and they come to church. And then right after, they sort of take it back off when they get home after dinner. And 
it's back yeah. to the the grindstone again, you know. Yeah. And I'm finding it now to where I can't wait to go and pick up my Bible. And there's there's just so many people out there that I want to help. There's a man, I don't know his real name. He goes by the name of Highway. He walks from somewhere down by Toledo Blade in 41 up to Northport, catches the scat bus when he has money. I had uh, Todd at the um, health department give me a stack, I'm not kidding you, this thick of bus passes. I gave him half of them just because he needed to go to Venice to this certain place to eat because of all the stomach problems he had. You know, and he hikes Sunday, all the way from Northport all the way down to uh, Fort Charlotte down here to a certain restaurant that yeah, will cook just for him. Just the way he can eat. And one particular Sunday, this has been more than a year ago. Oh, and to tell everyone, he is crippled. Oh, yeah. He's, He's highly crippled. crippled. His, I mean, people don't understand. He walks with his one leg yeah. straight out, and his hands are all <laughs> deformed. They go inward, so he's got a How lot. How many miles do you think he walks in a day? Do you have any idea? I tracked him one day. I know. Did I know, you? I do. How many? 14 miles a day. And yeah, but about 95% of the time, of the time, time him, he walks. The first yeah. time I met him, he was heading towards North Fort Walton. Yeah. And I, I saw this man walking, and then the closer I got to him, I just, the guy saw me stop. I don't know this man from the Hill of Beans. He could have had a six inch, 12 inch knife. Well, he, but he somebody lived told in, me to stop. A, he actually lives so in I a stopped. Coat. I had I had over $100 in my hands or pocket at that time. And, and just as the man talked, I just, I got out my money and I handed him a 20. And I said, here, we'll get you something to eat. And he almost broke down because he said, I had just prayed to God to send me someone who could give me some money for food. And so you know what, that just goes to show you that you don't have to be rich. And it don't have to be a lot. And I was still you know, homeless sometimes then. that lasts five dollars, even though you're homeless. You can help someone else. And that's what I try to, um, you know, people don't realize, you know, they think they have to give or, or, or help out in a big way. You know what? Just keep gas in the car. Keep gas in the truck going, you know. That, that helps me tremendously. You'd be surprised how many times that I can't go and do good and go help others just because I, I don't have the money to put gas in the truck to go. But yet then I have people that are even in my church that watch me. See, even though I'm out doing what I do, there's people that watch me because they know that I do with every, every dollar that I have, I'm willing to do anything with. So they make sure that I continue going. You know what I mean? So they'll walk out, hey, I know this is probably useless, but here's a gas car with 30 bucks on it, you know? Yeah, that's how they are. Yeah. And I'm sure you've done yeah. the same, you know? Or, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's amazing. Or they'll come up and they'll say, hey, Jim, I got a, here's a bag of stuff that I don't no longer have any use for, you know. But you can find a home for it, you know. You know, load it up in the back of my truck on Sundays, you know, they'll put stuff in the back of my truck all the time. Or, you know, they know that I give out tents and sleeping bags and things like that. So, I mean, one, about once a year I do a, a call out, you know, a shout out to them to let people know, hey, it's coming up in the wintertime. You know, these are the yeah. that really get really, you know, you know how it is. Yeah. You know, that really is needed, you know, blankets, uh, uh, tents especially. Yeah. Um, you know, just sleeping bags. But uh, it's, it's so bad what the police are doing. I know. That's, uh, they just... They go and they cut and the tents All up. we want is a, a place to lay down and put our head at night, you know? That's it. They come and wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning and kick you, say, keep going, you know, make and you And it's walk. not all homeless people are <laughs> trashy. Look how, how many white trash, trashy people you have living in homes. One but of you my know nicest what? friends, bird, one of my best friends anything? is homeless. He went into the coalition the same day as I did, and we're still friends. I help him out once a month or whenever he tells me I'm ready. 
will clean out my truck, we'll load up all of his stuff, go everywhere, and we'll go down and, and turn it in. And even though it's been him that collects most of the stuff, he always gives me half of whatever we do. That's working with each other, that's what it's all about. Let me check the time on our camera. Might have to start another one. Yeah, let's let's uh, start on another one. 